So do you get what you expected uh, practice-wise here today from Ellis? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> they knew, you know, obviously we were going to do a lot of skating up and down. Um, you know, it's, it's a long time to be off. And the biggest thing is turning your brain back on, but also, you know, touching the puck again, the reaction stuff. It's going to take a little bit to, to get that all back. Um, tomorrow will be more of a skills and, and, and then a weird start time, you know, right behind that at 12.30. So, um, but you play one game and away we go. Is there a little bit of concern going into that one game about <clears throat> finding your rhythm and finding it quickly? Well, yeah, I mean, the first period, I mean, they're going to be flying. They're, they, you know, it'll be their third game after the break and we're coming off. Um, so getting up to speed with one of the league's fastest teams. Um, but in saying that, once you get up to that speed, you're up and going. Update on uh, where Cam Talbot is at. Did he skate before you guys? Skated or? prior. Um, you know, won't be available to us <clears throat> um, next game. We'll see how it goes um, from there. He'd have to get back to practice with you first, right? And yeah, I mean, um, he, he's. I mean, he's in shape. He knows his body. Um, you know, he works extremely hard. Um, and he'll be ready when he does get that, that chance. But, yeah, you're going to need some practices. I mean, he's been off for quite a bit of time now. Everything looked like Artem Zub will be uh, good to go here. Yeah, I think <clears throat> today was just about reps for him and seeing where he's at. He hasn't played in so long, um, I believe, uh, um, you know, however long he's been out here. That, um, and he hasn't had a lot of practices either. I mean, he got one practice before, the, before we left for Montreal. Um, so again, he'll practice tomorrow. We'll talk to him, um, but we're hopeful that he'll play. And you talked about maybe not putting him with Shabbat, like that you were open to maybe a little bit of flexibility there. What's your mindset if he comes back on Saturday in terms of where you might, we might see Artem Zub? Well, I think first, before I put him there today, we want to make sure that he's available to play. I mean, you, you don't just give him a guy's spot and then, you know, all of a sudden he can't play and you're, you know, so once we find out where he can play, we'll, just, we'll see where that goes, but definitely open um, to anything um, that'll help us win games at this point. And if, you know, it all depends as to <clears throat> Edmonton, a lot of times they go 11 and 7. You know, if, they, if they're stacking one line, you know, do you want Zub, uh, you know, depending on how many reps he has against them as much as possible, um, things like that. So we'll watch and see how they do tonight, and we'll make a, you know, a better decision tomorrow. We haven't had a chance to talk to you since before the break, but what do you want, what does, what do you want to see from Mark Cows to look in? Belleville. Well, I think the big thing for him um, is he was trying to play, you know, a little bit dinged up. And it's un totally understandable for a young guy. You, you don't want to say if you how banged up you are or not. You, you don't want to leave the lineup, um, you know. And for him, he has to get touches. I mean, this is his last opportunity, you know, in an entry-level situation. Um, and the organization thinks the world of him when it comes to being a part of this team going forward. And um, certainly, you know, he's uh, – He's done some really good things here, but I think he needs to play a lot of minutes. You know, his minutes have gone down there um, here, sorry. Um, you know, and, and we're winning some games, so that's fine. But, uh, you know, he'll go down there, get his rhythm, and then at some point get another crack. How do you kind of pick up where you left off? And, and how <clears throat> hard is that to do? Well, it's hard to do because the mentality of when you're winning um, just carries game to game and your confidence and your feel. It's been so long that you want to remind the guys, you know, what that winning feeling's like, but it's been a while. Um, so you got what you got to do is go and win a game. And if you can win, you know, the first one back, um, that feeling comes right back to you. How do you approach a guy like McDavid? And they got dry settled too. Well, you have to be above them the whole game. These guys continuously every year, they're one and two in scoring. I mean, if you take a bunch of penalties, you're going to lose. And if you <clears throat> um, try and outscore them while you're on the ice, you're probably going to lose. And you have to be aware when they're out there. But at the same point, we got to make their guys play defense. And um, I think the biggest thing for us is to get up to speed. Um, <clears throat> you know, start this month off right. Um, you know, I think last month we talked about whether the ups or downs, we wanted to be above 500. We, you know, we finished above 500 for the second month. Um, you know, this is no easier. You look at the games. These are tough games right out the shoot. Um, but again, we just want to put our head down and, and, and try and do it again. What separates McDavid from to make him such a great player? Well, skating is just off the charts. I mean, and then his ability to make plays in traffic at, at an unreal speed. Um, a lot of guys, you know, there's fast players, but he's able to slow his brain and, and slow his hands down and think it's so good in high level. 
at the highest level anyone can move. And then clearly, uh, his game continues to get better. His backhand, if you see his backhand, he's scoring on his backhand now. He's adding different things. Um, their power play continues to torch everyone over a four-year span here. Um, so, I mean, he's he's a generational player. And, uh, you know, I think you'd say the, probably the same about Dreisaitl if, you know, they're on the same team. So you, one or the other takes the night off, the other guy's rolling. So it's a tough combo. I think I heard they're the hottest team in the National Hockey League over the last month. Um, so it is what it is. It's a hockey game. Anybody can beat anybody, though. You, uh, you had nine days in between your last game and now. Like, did you personally completely unwind? Or was there days where you, uh, you were still looking at the iPad or looking at video or, like, <laughs> Would, would you characterize your time off as relaxing in any way? No, no. Um, it, in saying that, I got to go home. Um, you know, my son plays uh, for the Windsor Spitfires. I went to three of those games. Um, you know, so you're watching those games. You're watching some of the players in that league. Um, you're trying to make your team better with things over the break. Uh, you know, clearly we've been scoring more of late, but we want to score more um, also well not giving up as much you know we want to work on zone time you know so we're watching the best teams in the league and and how we can be better that way you know we don't have a ton of practice time today we got a little bit done tomorrow we'll get some more done but um you know if you're not trying to get better someone else is uh, and that's part of the job i mean uh, for us the downtime as coaches in the summertime um you know but it was good my kids got to go home see their see uh, their grandparents um, which they don't get to see that's part of the hockey the family suffers a lot when it comes to the travel and the amount of time they get to see people when you're not from this you know when you're not from ottawa so we were able to get home <clears throat> my wife and and the kids and everyone got to be together Good to get uh, really very active during the break. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that's a good call by Pierre, you know, to get him down there. Clearly, you know, it was Pierre's call. He didn't want him to play. Um, he wanted him to keep skating for a few more days, though, and and lifting and getting stronger. I mean, Ridley <clears throat> has done a real nice job here, um, but he has to continue to get stronger and faster as, as, as he ages and continue to work on his game. So nine days off would have been a little probably too much for him. So, you know, Pierre thought uh, – it was a good idea to give him some some reps down there in practice, get some lifts in, and then he still got a little bit of a breather. I think they're in, like, in flux, I guess, down there in Belvo. How What's that, sorry? I think they're in flux, I guess, in Denver with the coaching change. How, how does that change things for the relationship you have with, with the head coach down there? Nothing. I've known I've known David Bell for a long time, stand-up guy. <clears throat> He's going to work his hardest. At the end of the day, um, you know, my job is to coach the Ottawa Senators, and, uh, you know, Management uh, will make their decisions, and, and all I can do is worry, worried about coaching this team. What does Marcus Costellic have to do? Is it just uh, is he just going down to get some conditioning in, or is it just <coughs> things that he has to still work on? No, it's just continue to touch the puck and get some reps in and get some ice time in. And, and you know, if you look at his ice time, you know, he hasn't been much past 10 minutes or around 10 minutes, you know, for this stretch. Um, and then his faceoffs dipped a bit, but, but it, it was the injury related. I mean, there there was nights he was coming out here and, and, and winning, you know, 75% of his draws. And, you know, that injury was nagging him. And this ability to take a step back, touch the puck, play more minutes. Like I said, the organization thinks the world of the kid. He's the hardest worker, you know, we've seen in a long time. Um, the players love him. You know, it's a hard part of the business is when you see a guy go down and you want him to be here and all the guys want him to be here. But ultimately, you know, Drake Batherson, all these guys, they've been up and down, up and down. And then eventually, you know, they're here for good. This is his last opportunity, in my opinion, to really play those minutes down there, you know, and see the change of pace. And then, you know, clearly, you know, uh, going forward, we think he's a big part of this. I think, uh, the break will be good for Derek Broussard to gear up for his 1,000 game soon. You know what? Uh, he was, <laughs> we'll see. But, I mean, he was playing as good as he's played um, this little stretch before the break. Um, you know, typically, um, you know, when you play that many games in a row, you see a guy maybe take a step back. His hockey sense has allowed him the opportunity, you know, to continue to play at a high level when he doesn't have the good legs. You know, and, you know, a guy like Pence and, and Drake, they think the game's so high uh, – Offensively, IQ, Brass can think it right with them. And let's hope those guys, I mean, lines have changed a lot, right? And let's hope those guys can continue to mesh. And then all of a sudden now we've got a little more depth down the lineup where, you know, someone's going to get an opportunity to play against a, a weaker set of D. How, how good is it to get a break in the middle of it all? I know you worry about 
keeping the rhythm going here, but at the same time, I know you talked after the Montreal game about that mental break. Yeah, no, it's big. I mean, it's uh, obviously we we play a game for a living, but at the end of the day, it's a lot of a lot of games in a short period of time, and obviously to get that week to just. Uh, like I said, Montreal, everybody's got a little injuries. Everybody's got a little something going on. So to have some time and uh, just lay low and, and make sure that uh, you fix some of those and then coming back, obviously, it's always fun. And uh, no, it was a great week for sure. Two practices and then it's up to speed here. Is that the biggest challenge, trying to get up to the speed that you know that the Oilers are going to be at? Yeah, I mean, they, uh, especially playing a team that what played, I think, one or two games. So... Yeah. Uh, you know, it's going to be a challenge, but I mean, at the end of the day, we, uh, I thought our skate today was pretty good, impressively good, to be honest, as uh, usually one of those skates, uh, we've only been off for, what, seven days or whatever it might have been, and it uh, feels like you haven't touched a hockey stick in like a full year, And uh, but the guys were skating, guys were, uh, were good, and obviously we got a, another skate tomorrow, and obviously getting back to the game, it's just getting back to what we did before the break, and uh, getting that feeling again. How do you get back to that? What has to be kind of the focus here in the last 32 games? I mean, it's just the way we've been playing. I think we we, we started holding on to the pucks a lot uh, a lot longer, uh, a lot more time in the offensive zone. And obviously, when you're in the zone, you don't have to play D zone. And uh, you know, those those are simple things that we've been uh, we've been doing. And if we keep uh, keep going that way, I mean, we've had success doing it. So I'm sure if we uh, do the same thing, we'll we'll be right back on the same train. How do you approach a guy like McDavid? I mean, he's yeah. not the only one on the team that can yeah. score, but... You know. I mean, it's a good question. I think everybody's asking themselves that same question. It's, uh, I mean, he's so spe- he's so special. He's, he's dangerous every, every single time he touches the puck, and obviously his speed is is always scary for us as a defenseman, and everybody's aware of that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it's the same story every time you play uh, uh, Edmonton. I mean, it's him and Drysaddle uh, carry, what, over pretty much the entire offense. So if you can find a way to maintain those two, uh, I think you give yourself a good chance to uh, to win a game. So, uh, how comfortable are you? Do, you? do you feel like you could play on uh, on Saturday? Yeah, I'm ready to play. Yeah, everything is good. Yeah. How, how was your uh, your break? Your uh, your downtime? Yeah. Did you enjoy a little bit yeah. of uh, yeah. relaxing time? Yeah, it was good. Yes, we we went with family like to on vacation. Uh, Dominican, like it, it was good. Yeah. And right now, like injury-wise, you're feeling uh, pretty much back to normal. Yeah, good. I'm feeling good. It's been a long stretch for you. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like it's lots of injuries this season. Like I hope, like I come back to play and I start to like play the rest of the season. Like right now. Yeah. You you had mentioned that you had lost a little bit of weight because of the broken jaw. Everything gained back now, and you're feeling. No. Good. Yeah. Right now, it's my my weight is good. Yes. It's my, after when I come in. Came play after last last time like and uh, my weight is was good like already yeah. Should be back without the the full face mask to. Yeah, like this doctor said to me like you can play in the results yes yeah. Just. You get put to the test on Saturday with Connor McDavid and yeah. company in town. <laughs> yeah, this will be a good game uh, yes. Uh, we have to like just a good start so it's first uh, just first shift like yeah. We we need uh, we'll be ready like start the game like.